We're talking about all the best candy and we're talking about tons of it. Put on your bucket hat and crank up those boy bands. We've got the top 10 90s candies that defined a generation. If you're a 90s kid, what did you spend your allowance on? Gum? Candy bars? Let's see what made the list. Hershey's Cookies and Cream. I'd like a bar of chocolate, please. The first ever Hershey's Milk Chocolate Bar was sold in the year 1900, and for the next 94 years, it was the standard bearer for the Pennsylvania-based purveyors of chocolate. Hershey had, of course, released variations of their classic chocolate over all those decades, but it was 1994 when the most stark departure from the formula showed up on store shelves. Hershey's Cookies and Cream stepped away from the classic brown milk chocolate formula by using a white cream base for the bar and saving the chocolate for the cookie bits contained within a dozen delicious rectangular blocks. Hey kid, would you like a Hershey bar? The combination was a hit throughout the 90s and into today, and despite looking and tasting unlike any of Hershey's traditional releases, it too has seen a few spin-offs. A puff cereal version similar to Reese's Puffs brought cookies and cream to the breakfast table for a limited run in 2013, and 2005 saw a limited release of a pink strawberries and cream variation. The original mix is still the best, with a 2020 survey showing that nearly 9 million Americans enjoy at least one cookies and cream bar every month. Could we interest you in some chocolate? Warheads. Tell me where the warheads are! It was the 1980s when airheads were brought to the candy shelf forefront, but the 90s were edgier in more ways than one, and it was time to go to war. Warheads candy was invented in Taiwan in the 1970s and slowly started popping up in America in the 1980s, before the candy officially stormed the beaches of nationwide popularity in the 1990s. Extremely sour, warheads were the exact opposite of airheads' smiley niceties deriving intense sourness from malic acid and being potent enough to include a written warning on the package which stated, eating multiple pieces within a short time period may cause a temporary irritation to sensitive tongues and mouths. I'll try! I'll try and be sour and sweeten! While Airhead packaging uses a smiling balloon as a figurehead, Warheads lowers the boom with mascot Wally Warhead, whose head is literally exploding with a mushroom cloud of sourness. Rather than off Putting, though, the candy's extreme intensity proved extremely popular. By 1998, sales of the novelty candy across the USA saw an 11% increase, and before the decade ended in 1999, the Warheads brand was estimated to have a $40 million net worth. If you can handle it, Warheads are still in production today, but they weren't the only sour sensation to storm out of the 90s. Interesting. Cry Baby Extra Sour Bubblegum Ah, I cry like Snoopy! Grab a box of Kleenex for this next one because it's a real tearjerker. Crybaby Sour Bubblegum is today sold and manufactured by Tootsie Roll Industries, but its roots stretch back to 1991 and its original manufacturer in Pennsylvania. These gumballs are legendary for leaving a sour taste in everyone's mouth, and they dominated the 90s almost based entirely on friends daring each other to see who could stand it the longest, as opposed to other sour candies like Warheads that typically held an initial intensity of around 10 seconds, Crybaby's packages originally declared the gum holds its sourness for a minimum of 40 seconds after the first chew. Naturally, it's available in sour lemon flavor, but cherry, apple, berry, and orange also pack a punch. If the packs of five or nine gumballs each aren't enough of a challenge, Crybaby also carries crunchy teardrop-shaped candies, softer Crybaby chews, and the unique Crybaby drinks, which are jelly candies filled with sour liquids. If you can't decide which specific punishment you want to take on, try the Extreme Sour Mix bags that include both gum and candies, as well as sour lollipops. All we can say for sure is, if the 90s never brought us crybabies, we'd definitely have a tear in our eye. You need a friend. <laughs> A chocolate friend. Reliving the 90s is easy, but not as easy as hitting that subscribe button to become an official Babble Topper. So if you're new to the channel, go ahead and smash it. Thanks. Baby Bottle Pop. You want us to make
baby bottles. If anyone needed a tissue after hearing about crybabies, maybe it's time to let the baby have its bottle. In candy form, that is. Just making the cut at the end of the decade, Baby Bottle Pop was born into the world in 1998 and introduced a whole generation of kids to a baby bottle phenomenon they apparently hadn't grown out of. A combination two-for-one treat, each baby bottle-shaped lollipop is dippable into a flavor-enhancing powder for double the deliciousness. Aside from the interactive fun of bottle pops, an advertising campaign with a catchy jingle forever etched the candy into the collective American consciousness. A decade after being released, baby bottle pops remained so popular that the jingle was remixed by the Jonas Brothers for a commercial that boosted the candy's success even higher. Different variations of the candy have popped up over the years, like the 2D Max Bottle Pop that introduces a third crunchy candy into the mix. But the original mechanism is still the best way to hit the bottle these days. Bottle Pops came in nine original fruity flavors and recently added Unicorn Berry to the mix. But as long as they don't taste like baby formula, we'd say there's no need to be a baby about enjoying this 90s classic. I brought the candy and I brought a lot of it because I love candy. Creepy Crawlers Fruit Snacks I'm making my own fruit snack. It was 1993 when the decade gave birth to the classic sci-fi program The X-Files. But we've got an entry from our fruit snack files to add to the list. These fantastic fruit snacks were, like so many cereals and snacks of days gone by, tied into a marketing gimmick that would also sell toys and Saturday morning cartoons. The roots of Creepy Crawler's fruit snacks go back three decades before their time defining the 90s and to a Mattel DIY plastic mold toy called the Thing Maker. Think Easy Bake Oven, but for plastic toys instead of baked goods. So you don't burn your finger. Can you see that? Production eventually ceased due to kids constantly burning themselves on the heating element, but in 1992, a company called Toymax revived Mattel's creation with a line of bug and insect molds dubbed Creepy Crawlers. The new and less scalding version of superheated plastics became an overnight sensation, checking the boxes of spawning an animated cartoon series in its name, and, of course, a sugary snack that kids could scarf down while watching that same cartoon. But alongside other 90s fads like Tamagotchis and Beanie Babies, Creepy Crawlers quickly fizzled out and took their sugary spiders and candy caterpillars back to the drawing board. So badly. So delicious. So delicious. This next 90s favorite came and went faster than the Spice Girls reunion tour, but this unique crossover snack will always have a place in 1990s junk food lore. Candy, flavored like various soda pops, had been around long before the 90s, gifting us with gummies that tasted like cola, root beer, and popular lemon-lime soft drinks like Sprite and 7-Up. But a new twist on that classic idea popped up in 1991 on the back of the fruit snack craze. Although linking the manufactured straight sugar sweetness of So Delicious to real fruit of any kind requires some questionable judgment. Although sold in boxes of pouches like other fruit snacks, So Delicious also complemented its soda flavors with an outer layer of sugar to replicate the carbonated experience of an actual bubbling bottle from a vending machine. Half soda and half snack, So Delicious flavors included cherry cola, root beer, orange, red punch, and lemon lime, and even eventually an official cross promotion with 7 Up that introduced 7 Up and cherry 7 Up flavored candies to the mix. It was fun while it lasted, but this soda sensation eventually went flat by the middle of the decade before officially being discontinued in 1998. They're my very favorite snack. Cream Savers. You want to give me all your candy. The 90s brought us the Cheers sitcom spin-off Frasier, and here's another spin-off with a different take on an old classic. Lifesavers Candy entered the world in 1912 as a less melty summer alternative to chocolate and ice cream, but it was 84 years later when Nabisco would add a literal twist to the concept. The company acquired the Lifesavers brand in 1985, and just over a decade later in 19. 96 introduced the Cream Savers variant. As the name suggests, the usually prominent fruit flavors gave way to a creamier hard candy, and the trademark hole in the middle was filled in. The literal twist came visually, with each candy having a hypnotic swirl that half and half combined cream and fruit or cream and desserts, including tastes like strawberries and cream or raspberry and cream, as well as butter, toffee and cream, and 
vanilla and cream. This creamy candy of the 90s was eventually discontinued in 2011, but revived again in 2021, proving that the 90s will live forever through sensible haircuts, high-waisted jeans, and our taste buds. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Original Chocolate Chip Cookie Dough Bites Pass the cookie dough. Chocolate chip cookie dough wasn't just comfort food after a sad movie or devastating breakup, it also rose to prominence as a bite-sized snack. It was 1991 when Ben & Jerry's first debuted pints of chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, which just one year later made up 20% of all ice cream sales for the company. By 1997, another company decided to take the idea out of the freezer. Taste of Nature Company was founded in 1992 and focused on healthier snacking alternatives but eventually needed to dip their feet in the junk food aisle to keep the business afloat, which led to the 1997 debut of Cookie Dough Bites. Chocolate covered with a cookie dough center with each candy being exactly 50% of each, Dough Bites are eggless, which allows them shelf stability for up to a year and makes them perfect as a snack to be sold at movie theaters. After being distributed originally at the movies with the big screen, chocolate chip cookie dough bites also moved into the domain of the small screen, being sold nationwide at another 1990s institution, Blockbuster Video. Today, the bites are available in eight different flavors of dough, ensuring the next time we need to eat our feelings after that sad movie, they'll at least be bite-sized. Very tasty. Fruit by the foot. You guys want to see something cool? Get out your measuring tape for this lengthy treat that was so good it never took any length of time to eat. The 1980s brought us Hubba Bubba Bubble Tape Gum, and when the 90s rolled around, General Mills unrolled a fruit snack swag with a similar idea. Hitting the market under the Betty Crocker brand in 1992, Fruit by the Foot was a three-foot length rolled-up fruit snack that conveniently fit in any school lunch bag and was a hit at every recess bell across the nation. Originally having straightforward fruit flavors like raspberry or cherry, these days Fruit by the Foot is available in berry tie-dye, blue raspberry, and strawberry that pack an extra visual appeal with funky tie-dye colors. But Fruit by the Foot has teamed up over the years to produce crossovers with other 90s sensations like Nintendo 64 and Scholastic Goosebumps books that printed trivia and game tips on the roll-up's paper backing. With a snack this long, food and fun are never out of reach. Hey, buddy! Check out my new business. As we near the end of our 90s favorites flashback, give this video a quick hit of that like button, cause we've got one that doesn't quite qualify as a candy, but it was definitely a 90s sensation. As the name suggests, Dunkaroos were a dunkle snack that featured separated cookies and frosting that could be dipped as much or as little as desired. They even featured a kangaroo mascot, aptly named Duncan, that completed the marketing package. Dunkaroos entered this world the same time the actual decade did, when they were introduced in 1990. And despite being a mainstay through the rest of the decade, they were eventually discontinued in the new millennium and pulled from American production in 2012. But 90s nostalgia would not be denied and the classic snack slam-dunked its way back into stores in 2020 and remains available across the USA through retailers like CVS, Kroger, Walmart, and Target. Rumors persisted, however, that the new Dunkaroos have suffered a recipe change, which General Mills denies. Whether the perceived differences are nefarious or just due to lost time, we'd all like to travel back to the 90s to know for sure. It's true. It's true. Gushers. Ugh, that didn't taste like a gusher. One year before Betty Crocker was stretching our imaginations and our appetites with Fruit by the Foot, the company introduced another game changer to the fruit snack aisle. Debuting in 1991 and originally released under the name Fruit Gushers, these snacks were a two-in-one gush of goodness. A typical soft and chewy hexagonal fruit snack shell was used to contain a burst of fruit-flavored syrup that lived up to the gusher part of the name. The double bursts of fruity flavor were distributed in nine snacks to every pouch and originally came in only two flavors, the appropriately named Gushin' Grape and Strawberry Splash. Since every 90s kid on any playground in America always shortened the name to Gushers, Betty Crocker eventually dropped the fruit part of the name to make it official. 
Today, the flavors have expanded faster than their namesake burst and come in strawberry and tropical flavors, as well as flavor mixers, where the candy and syrup are separate tastes in the same bite that features orange cherry, strawberry peach, and raspberry lemonade. There's also a super sour Gushers variety, but with a fruit snack this fun, we'd bet they never leave a sour taste in anybody's mouth. How does it taste? Uh. Got a 90s candy favorite? Let us know! And tap or click for another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.